Okay, it has now been a couple of weeks since I last worked on Max Mac Classic 2. I actually wanted to, before I returned to it, actually brush up on my soldering a little bit because I knew that that would be involved in some of the next steps here. So practiced on an old GPU that I knew needed to be recapped. Uh, if uh, I end up making a video out of that one, I'll be putting the uh, link to that on screen. But for now, it's time to return to working on this Mac. So in case you didn't see the earlier videos, the place we left off was this Mac was getting illumination on the screen, but no image, no chime, uh, but I was hearing the hard drive try and spin up. So we have power, but we don't have booting. And what I discovered previously was that on this logic board, there were a few issues, mostly with the capacitors, but some other stranger things as well. So some of the things I found were that one of the uh, slots that the RAM was in was actually kind of corroded, it looks like. I cleaned that as best I could, but actually took it out entirely for now. The capacitors on the board had actually all already been replaced, which is nice because I figured it was one less thing I had to do, but most of them are not soldered very well. And in fact, one of them, this C9 over here, is actually totally missing. That's one of the things we're gonna try and fix today because I did order some replacement capacitors and that one is probably the first to try. And especially since according to some reverse engineered schematics I found, uh, that may be related to the audio circuit, so that could help explain why we're not getting a chime. Uh, so that's one thing we want to look at tonight. Another thing we want to look at tonight is here on the actual 68030 processor, there is, don't know if it's coming up on camera very much, like a solder blob or something bridging a couple of those pins. Probably something that happened when this capacitor was being replaced. So, those are the two things we want to address tonight. So these are actually the capacitors that I bought. <laughs> Not just the one that I know needs to be replaced, but I actually bought enough to replace all of them a couple times over, just in case that's what's needed, because they're individually very cheap. So we're going to look up which capacitors actually need to be replaced. So the one in question, that C9, is actually a one microfarad 50 volt capacitor, positive on the right, negative on the left. Now, similar to the ones that were already done in here, these are not surface mount capacitors the way that the Mac was originally manufactured. They are the through hole kind. And what I'm planning on doing that I've seen one other YouTuber do, see if I can find their video again, um, is I actually want to bend these around to make little pads that'll be easier to solder in place on there to hopefully make it a little cleaner than what we had done on this before. But because I don't really have a whole lot of experience with uh, surface mount device soldering, uh, that seemed the safer route to go. I'm probably doing it wrong. This is the internet. I'm sure you'll tell me as usual. All right, can I heat up the iron there? Uh, and I am using a different uh, camera to shoot this. I'm using my iPhone just because it's worked out well in close-ups before. So we'll see if that continues to be the case. Uh, one other thing I did get a replacement for is uh, the PRAM battery. I borrowed this one from my G4 Cube, but technically it's probably kind of old as well. 2000 is less old than uh, the early 90s, but I picked up some replacement batteries. So we will be able to put more modern batteries in and have it retain PRIM settings if we want it to do that. Which apparently this company, Saft, owns the uh, other company. This was interesting. So Teddy Ran seems to be a brand that's only available uh, commercially, like to OEMs and whatnot. Saft is actually the company, French company, I believe, that owns them now. So it's all the same thing. They're just uh, lithium primary batteries. So that'll work. I'm just killing time while the iron heats up. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to prepare this to fit on to those pads down there. So much shadows here. At some point I'll figure out how to shoot these videos properly. So what I want to do is make these into itty bitty pads. I 
here, something like that. It's the plan anyway. Try and make it actually seem like it fits on there. This is amazingly smaller than the existing ones. Are these actually right? Those are 4.7 microfarads. Check the chart again. Are all these capacitors the wrong amount? Like some of these are 100 microfarads and things like that. That is not. And this is the classic too. What on earth? Are all of these like totally wrong? According to this, like these should be 47 at 16, 10 and 10 at 16, and 1 at 50. But what I've got here are the larger one in the corner. That's a hundred microfarads uh, at 63 volts as opposed to 16. And these are both 4.7 at 63. These all sound wrong. That's bizarre. Why? So I guess I'll replace this one, but maybe they all have to be replaced. Oh, some of these are like, some of these are cold too, like that. It shouldn't wiggle so much. Don't even know if that's making contact. These are all very badly done. I mean, granted, I don't think I know that much what I'm doing either, but goodness, at least I know how to read the right numbers off a chart. Right, I guess let's start with what ought to be the easy stuff, getting that extra solder blob off of there. So I'm going to try and just wick that away. Well, I'm wicking a little bit of it away. It's coming up, but there's still some left on there bridging that. Okay, so some of it had actually dripped down, like if these, are, if my fingers are the pins and it was bridging across here, some of it had actually dripped down underneath when it softened up. And that is this little ball. I was able to just kind of knock that off with the spudger. It's definitely less there. Okay, that looks a lot better now. Hopefully that removes the bridging that was occurring there. So hopefully that fixes something. So the other thing I want to do now is at minimum replace that one capacitor, but as I found out, it looks like most of them are the wrong capacitance as well, which is not exactly fun, but that's what I have to deal with here. All right, positive to the right, so negative to the left, so it's going to go in this way. Doesn't stand up, of course. This is going to be a little bit of a juggling act. Get some flux on here. So I'm getting a little bit on there, not as much as I would like. That's probably not the best soldering job ever at all. That one's a little better, I think. Was better before I messed with it. Well, it's ugly enough that I think I've lost much room to complain about the previous guy who worked on this board. 
but the goal here is functional at the moment. Okay, so now let's see what that has accomplished. So clearing off that solder blob and poorly soldering on the replacement capacitor for the one that was missing, and which is now the only one of the replacements that seems to be the correct capacitance according to that chart. So pop in a PRM battery, just so we have it. Now all the voltages as tested at the floppy port were, the external floppy port, were correct last time around. So I believe the power supply board is doing what it's supposed to. I'm going to leave the hard drive disconnected for right now just because I don't want to stress it unnecessarily. But even without that, we ideally should be able to hear a chime, see, even like a, a sad Mac. I'd be happy to see a sad Mac at some, even just because that would be an image. Not hopes up too much, but let's see. There's that illumination with the retrace lines that we had before. Uh, the black line you see going down is just the refresh rate on my phone camera. Yeah, so far looks like still no chimes, still no uh, actual graphical image. So what else can I try here? I'd really, I'd preferred not to just recap the whole thing, just because I know that that level of soldering in general is not my forte, but not sure what else would be next. I mean, assuming, of course, we don't just have something totally bad on the logic board to begin with, which would be really unfortunate, but entirely possible. All right, something else I just noticed looking at this, because not only were a lot of these replaced capacitors not look like they're the right kind, but C8, this one right next to the one that I just replaced here, it's even backwards, because that indicates on the logic board that should be the positive end, but this stripe is for the negative side of this capacitor. Um, so yeah, there's a whole bunch that's not done well here at all. Um, can I do better? Maybe? Uh, maybe. And another correction, I realized that uh, on recap a Mac, I had been looking at uh, the revision B for the Macintosh Classic 2. What I have is actually the revision A, which has the four ROM chips in the corner, but the values of those capacitors I was looking at are the same across both. So uh, the one that I replaced, the one microfarad 50 volt, that is uh, correct now, but the rest of these that were replaced by the previous owner, those are all wrong. And this one's backwards. Okay, so after all my uh, noticing of the capacitor that the previous repair put on totally backwards, I realized that the one that I put on is also backwards. So that's no good at all. So right now my intention is to replace both of the backwards ones, the one that the previous repair put on and the one that I just put on. Okay, so that's off. Now I have to soak up an awful lot of it. Just goodness, they had a lot there. Okay, that pad's clean. Okay, that's one removed. Oh, that one actually wasn't on very well at all. Oh well. I don't like that one really black pad. And so now I need 10 microfarad and one microfarad. Here's the one. And here's the 10. There we go. Made those wide pads.
sides for the 10 microfarad one. The same for the one. All right, here's the one microfarad one. So not the prettiest things in the world, but they're on there. And the polarity is right, and the values are right, and they don't shake. They also don't stick up as much because they're not uh, the wrong values. So I think the last thing we're gonna do tonight is see if that makes any difference. If it doesn't, then the next step's gonna be a try replacing everything, or, uh, sending it off to a professional. And the black line is just the horizontal refresh on my camera. Nope, no such change. So I replaced two of the capacitors, one that was missing entirely and one that was on backwards. Uh, no change in the behavior of the Mac. Uh, it's possible a lot of these other ones, since they are the wrong value, and some of them like this one are a little bit loose, like that solder ball should not be moving in the corner there so much. Uh, could be that those are the issue, but I did see one other indication online that there might be another culprit. So that Mac, not the exact same model, but it's looking very, very, actually is it the exact same model? No, it's an SE30, but similar sort of driving type thing. And it's got the same kind of appearance that I'm having on the screen. And this post is indicating that it may be this one NPN transistor on the video driver board, the one that connects like right to the back of the CRT, or I've already disconnected this one. Uh, so that may be worth investigating. I'll at least see if I can test if that transistor is bad, because if it is, that's easy enough to replace. Uh, I can order one cheap and it's a through hole, so it'll be much uh, more in line with my soldering abilities anyway. Now this is a little hard to see, so I am going to disconnect the ground lead. Yeah, that's just to let me be able to turn it this way. All right, so we gotta remove this back shield. And although I did discharge the CRT, I'm being very careful because some of this stuff may still be carrying some voltages. There we go. And the other one. Danger high voltage. So what we want to test on this guy very carefully is this transistor. So there's the three connections for that. 2N3904M239. All right, so I've got my multimeter in diode mode. All right, this is gonna be interesting to hold. I need a third hand thing. That's an awful lot of coverage there. So that's working on more directions than I thought it would. So it might be bad. Check for a short circuit between the collector and the emitter. So the base is in the middle on either side of the collector and emitter. So we're gonna check for a short there. 
That might be a short, actually. So both testing for resistance that way and testing the diode test based on different suggestions I saw online, both do indicate that there may be a short in that transistor, which, uh, well, I can always just try it because those are cheap and it's a through hole transistor, so it shouldn't be too painful to uh, replace compared to some of the surface mount stuff. That may be the next thing I try, and uh, if I make another DigiKey order, that'll be another uh, excuse to get some more solder wick and maybe a solder sucker and more fun tools like that. And who knows, maybe I'm entirely wrong because I'm not exactly normally doing component level repairs, so this is new territory for me. But that's the purpose of this channel, just to show me flailing around with this hobby and see if you get some entertainment value out of it. In my testing I did last time around, I got some indication that that might actually be the case. So we are going to attempt to replace that today. So just to get a better look at it with this new toy, that is a 2N3904 NPN transistor. It's through hole, so it should be relatively easy to replace. And I do happen to have my order from DigiKey here for what should be a compatible transistor. So that's what we're going to try and do today. And I got a few other things in the DigiKey order, so now I actually have a proper plunger soccer setter, solder sucker, if I can actually speak, uh, which should be easier than just trying to use wick for everything. Also got third hand here, which should make it easier to hold things like this, because this, uh, this board is actually somewhat permanently connected to the uh, power sweep board. Uh, so I'm not really intending to unsolder any of that. So we're going to just hold this in a different way. It does actually, on here, it is, does actually label where the pins go. So there's the base in the center, emitter, and then collector would be on the other side. Well, let's try the new toy, shall we? Got a little of it off. Not that much, actually. Actually, this one out of it. There's less there, but it's not fully removed yet. Now we're now down low enough that the wick might, or braid might do what we need. Have I mentioned on this channel before how I'm not an expert at soldering, or desoldering for that matter? I'm somewhat competent at best. Feels like it's moving around. That one looks pretty free. Yeah, that's basically loose now. There we go. So one, remove, focus please. Focus, focus, no, focus, focus. There you go. One removed transistor. Oop, that I dropped. So 2N3904, 2N3904, different packaging, but same guy. All right, so now we're gonna put the new one through. Those holes are actually a little widely spaced, which is why the pins were splayed out on the original one. Cool, so that's back down where it belongs. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to bend these pins out a little bit. And that is purely to hold it in place because I don't wanna hold it in from the back, but with the pins spread out like that a little bit, that'll be easier for it to hold. A little bit of flux on there. That does help. That's not bad. Let's see if I can do it again. Please. 
There we are. And one more. Ooh, hello. It's way too much solder. Well, the good news is it, it all caught on this lead here, which I'm just going to trim off. So I could clean that up, but it'll clean itself up in a moment. Yeah, that last one's a little bit uglier, but it doesn't look like it's bridged or anything. Uh, first two, especially that uh, one they see on the right there. I'm pretty happy with that one. And I'm also pretty happy with this dumb little microscope. This is the one that Adafruit sells. Nice close look at things. One other thing I might do while I have this here is check the reverse of this board because it's fairly discharged right now and that will allow me to do something that uh, Herb suggested which was to verify some of the solder joints especially for like the yoke connector here. those can sometimes become less solid of a connection. I don't think that's a problem that this one's got because I'm getting illumination on the screen. So the high voltage is clearly coming through and it's not getting a signal on between some of those extra retrace lines. So I've got several problems, but I don't think having power at all is one of them. I'm just gonna rotate it off. And for the most part, things look pretty clean, like not really any signs of leaky caps or anything. A little bit of stuff around here. But that doesn't look like capacitor drainage, I don't think. Over here is usually where you see a lot of that. the most difficult thing to get attached. I don't know why. And this has a back plate that I should put back on. I think I'm not going to just yet. Yeah, no, no, I probably should for safety, shouldn't I? Yeah. That's all connected back up. Now we'll see if that transistor replacement actually did anything. Uh, so still leaving the logic board out. And actually I'm gonna disconnect the hard drive also. It's now energized. Don't blow up. So far, that's a regression. I'm no longer getting anything illuminated on the screen, which is not what I want. Hmm. Well, maybe it needs to have a logic board. Okay, believe it or not, this horribleness is progress. Because I've got an image on the screen, uh, the little band coming down is just a video uh, artifact. But 
The screen is illuminated. I'm not getting any of those uh, diagonal retrace lines, so it less, does look like that transistor was the cause of those retrace lines, which is kind of cool to know. That's some confirmation of what the internet was saying. This garbage is just garbage being output to the display. So that's going to be something on the logic board. Um, very commonly see this due to those capacitors. So probably more of the capacitors on that board do actually need to be replaced. Maybe some of the ones that I saw bad uh, soldering job from the previous person to repair it. But this is improvement. So we now have clean video coming out. It's just garbage video.